Good evening and welcome back to Sports Talk ATL. I am Chase Earl, joined by Alex Lord. Yesterday, the Braves, we talked about A.J. smith Shaver dominating in his debut, and now he's going to get a chance in a much more prominent role, or so it looks. I don't know what other direction the Braves could go, but they made the decision to option Michael Soroka back to Gwinnett. I know you are a little surprised by this, Alex. I mentioned it on the show yesterday that it was a possibility, and I know the Braves talked about how they – didn't want to send him back. They wanted to keep him up. They didn't want to yo-yo him back. And that that's a natural thing. And I'm not surprised that they said that. But the facts are that the results weren't there. And they didn't really look particularly close. Like, if you're walking more guys than you're striking out, there's not going to be a lot of chances for you to have success. He had a decent start against the A's. But again, that was the A's. And he still gave up four runs. The Diamondbacks roughed him up pretty good. He's just leaving a few too many balls over the plate. And he's walking too many batters. It's really like... It's nothing more than that. Like the stuff is there. There, he. I do believe he was out in Austin Riley's uh, charity golf event, and he said, "There's no reason I can't be there." And I 100% say that. I've been saying that all season. But I've also been saying that there are going to be some growing pains. The control is a little bit behind where it's supposed to be, and it's going to take him a little while to get there. That's going to be the last thing that comes. When that does come, he can be a piece of this rotation. I don't think. I think the Braves saw what I saw and said it's not close. Like it's not going to happen next start, and there's no point. If he goes out there and struggles against the Nationals, sure, it's a bad Nationals team, even though they perform better. But if he goes out there and struggles, it's just another bad outing. And at this point in the season, you're in June. You're trying to build a lead. You got the Mets coming up. You got the Nationals. You want to take advantage of that. You put your best foot forward. And I think right now the best foot forward is A.J. smith Shaver. Yeah, I hear all those things, and, I, and they're warranted. It's just shocking to me how much faith they put in him in terms of – you know, talking them up. We want to keep them up here. And now that they're pulling them down, it, it just felt like that leash was so short. And I know the stuff, you know, that you're talking about is all, all there. The control concerning. But like I said, that first home run he gave up against the Diamondbacks was a great pitch. It was just the, it would you know, you got to tip your cap to the batter sometimes. It wasn't just that, though. And I get all the other stuff about the walks and those are concerning. And, you know, it's a command thing. I hear all that. But. To me, I thought we were just at the stage of letting him work through it at the major league level. And, you know, it might not net the best results in that way. And I guess that's what the Braves think. They think, you know, you should work on your stuff in AAA. And that's the approach they're going with. Um, I'm not – I'm a little sad, and maybe that's why I think this way. Um, he's not done in the majors, everybody. You know, he'll be back up here. Chase wrote, wrote something about it on the site. Go visit the site, sportstalkatl.com. Um, we'll have more of this stuff on there in more detail. Uh, please go visit the site. Um, but yeah, I, I'm just a little disappointed that it, it, it was two, it was one bad outing and one so, so outing. And I know it was against the athletics, uh, but his next turn in the rotation would have, would, would have been against a bad national team's. To your point, it is overachieving right now, but I would have liked to see him get get one more out there. I don't know. Just what an incredibly short leash. I thought they'd give him one more, but like I said on, on the last episode, I, I'm not surprised. I just think the control's not there, man. Like, and it, like, it's not like he's making way too many uncompetitive pitches. I think that's the biggest problem. Like, if he was if he was walking guys and missing guys on the corners and doing stuff like that. But no, it's just out of nowhere. He just throws four wild balls that aren't that like the catcher has no idea where the ball is going. No one in the building has no where the ball is going. He's hitting batters. He's just giving up too many. Fr- like it's the uncompetitive pitches where it's like that's where you know, hey, this isn't going to work. You've got to throw competitive pitches in the major leagues, whether you're walking guys or not. If these guys are uncompetitive, you're going to make things so much easier because even if your misses are uncompetitive, it makes you so much easier to hit on the balls that are in the strike zone, especially if you're missing on pitches where you don't have certain control of a certain pitch. So now it's like, oh, you don't have control of that sinker. You don't know where that thing's going. I can look elsewhere and boom, that's why you're getting hit hard. So I just don't think he's just not ready. And I think the Braves initially thought, hey, they're going to call him up and give him a good shot. But they saw what they needed to see, and they made the decision a little faster than people wanted to. And listen, I would have loved to seen him. His next part, his next start, would have been against the Nationals at Truist Park. Like everyone wanted to see that. Like so, I understand that there's a sense of disappointment. But would you rather him come up and have that first home start when he's ready, when when he when he's when he's going to ball out, or would you rather him go out there and, and give up six earned runs against the bad National teams and lose the game? Listen, I'd like to have my cake and eat it too, and I don't have to choose, so I'll, I'll take both of them. I, yeah. And I think that if the Braves rotation 
was in a worse spot, I think he would stay up. But I think just because there is a little bit of depth now with A.J. smith Shaver, I think he's got to come to the rotation at this point. Schuster's been pushing a little bit. You know, he, he's, he's, he's looked all right. I think that if it was in a different state that they would – not be forced to, but they would be less inclined to, you know, keep them on a short leash like that. So I think the state of the rotation and all the things that you're saying, uh, you know, contributed to this. Well, let's talk about the astronomical rise that we've talked many times. I mean, it's crazy. Like over the couple of weeks that we've done this show, we brought up AJ Smith Shaver a ton. And I remember bringing him up, I think it was two weeks ago and he was still in double A and it was like, I'm telling you, this guy could come up to AAA. Like, and if he comes up to AAA, he's right. They're going to, they're like, that's where you're on the cusp. If you can show that you can do it at AAA, you're ready. Now, no one could have predicted it happened this fast. Not even me, who's been high on the AJ Smith Shaver train. And now we're talking about a guy who was in high A Rome two months ago, less than two months ago. Double A, AAA throws like 19 total innings, comes to the bullpen, shoves, and they just shove him right into the rotation. I mean, it's, the amount of faith that they're showing in this guy should excite everybody. And I saw, I've seen some comments like, "Oh, he wasn't really controlling his stuff." Like he, like he uh, against the Diamondbacks, blah blah blah. And it's like, you know what? I didn't see that. I didn't see that. Maybe I wasn't paying close enough attention. But if he wasn't cl- controlling his stuff as well as he possibly could, and he went out there and shot t- or threw two point one scoreless innings with three strikeouts. That tells me all I need to know. Like, so he wasn't at the top of his game and he went out against a good Diamondbacks team and shoved through three, basically 2.1 perfect innings, gave up one walk with three strikeouts, wasn't hit hard at all. That's the whole point. Like, that's what gets you excited about this guy. You saw him add that curveball to the mix. That was a little out of control, but that's kind of a a third pitch, pitch that he's working on. He's mainly fastball slider, just like Spencer Strider. And he's working on that third offering, but he has a third offering. And that's the point. And the fact that they're willing to throw him out here this fast, just, I mean, it's just like every, like he's now in the rotation. Like we are not even at June 10. He's probably going to make his first start around June 10. This guy was in high A Rome less than two <laughs> months ago. And now he's in the rotation. And now you're counting on him to give big innings. And th- what's crazy about this is we're, we're saying shocked that he's in the rotation. Like if the Braves are doing this, they not only think he can be a member of the rotation, they think he can be a guy in the rotation. Like they're not doing this because, Oh, we're desperate because they're not desperate. They have a three game lead in the division, six, five and a half over the Mets. Like they do not need to be doing this. They have an easy part of their schedule coming up. There is no reason to be doing this. They have best rotation ERA in the NL. I don't care if we're missing two guys, best rotation ERA in the NL. They're doing this because they think this guy can be a guy. And I'm not talking about like a, a back end rotation guy. They think this guy, if he performs up to his capabilities, can be a frontline starter in the MLB. And it's not crazy to say it could happen as soon as this year. Now, I don't want to put the cart in front of the horse. We got to see how it performs in these games, especially as a starter. But it's exciting. Like, there is this is a extremely, extremely exciting thing to think because we haven't seen this before. We didn't see this with Spencer Strider, as I said. We didn't see this. We haven't seen this with any other prospect of my lifetime. Of my lifetime, I've never seen anything like this. So the expectations on this guy should be set at the sky. They should be set at the sky. Yeah. Um, and if this is your first time joining us, uh, go to our YouTube channel, sportstalkatl.com. Please subscribe. Uh, we have all of our videos we record here on there. And you can go back and look at our cat, uh, our catalog of AJ Smith Shopper. You can see us progress from being like, hey, this guy's something to saying, you know, this guy could get a call up soon. Him getting the call up, us getting excited, him saying, or is it a bullpen? Is it a rotation? He was out of the bullpen. Now he's in the rotation. The guy is unbelievable. Um, and like I just said with Soroka, I, I, he would have stayed up if A.J. smith Shaver didn't exist. I, I, I truly believe that uh, because the Braves had just – I know we still – we're still we're down two of our best arms, our ace and our, you know, our three, and, and Kyle Wright and Max Fried. And, you know, it's still crazy how much depth this rotation has. It's a testament to the work Alex Anthopoulos has done, but it's also a testament – To the development. I mean, this guy's 20 years old, rocketing through the system. You said it, Chase. Never seen anything like this. Uh, I'm so excited. He's he's lining up to uh, debut against the Nationals. And I know everybody's thinking it's just the Nationals. Um, They are overperforming right now. uh, But they're a bad roster. I don't know how they're 
performing how they are right now. So he should have, you know, kind of like Soroka with the A's. It should be a fairly, you know, a fairly toss-up game. I mean, we'll see what this kid's got. I, I talked about it after his first outing um, and how he got pulled uh, after in his third inning. Uh, he had a walk and a single or just a single maybe. And I was, was so curious. That was a walk and a line out. So, yeah, he didn't even give up a hit. Right. So I was so curious to see what he was going to do with somebody on. You know, that's that's where you see what kind of, you know, major league pitcher you are when you deal with that kind of circumstances. So we're going to see it. And uh, I think it's going to be Friday or Saturday. So buckle up, Braves fans. I mean, what is he, 20 years old? 20 years old. Second youngest player in the majors. And as I wrote about when he was getting called up, the 110 minor league innings that he's pitched. You're talking about a guy his junior year of high school wasn't even a full-time pitcher. He was playing other positions. He kind of switched to there his junior year of high school, gets drafted in 2022 in the seventh round. Like this was not a top draft pick. So uh, you talk about Alex Anthopoulos, a testament. Some of the guys that he's picked, I mean, you get Michael Harris in the third round. You look at the 2020 draft, you got Jared Suster in the first, Bryce Elder in the fifth, and Spencer Strider in the fourth. I mean, it's just like some of the, and there was only five rounds in that draft. There was five rounds of that draft. You like you talk about the ultimate crapshoot. It is the MLB draft, and this guy goes out there in a five round draft in a COVID shortened season and picks up three guys that are now in your starting rotation. Two of which look like all stars, and, and you're only in this 2023 season. 2021, he gets Michael Harris in the third round. 2022, he gets AJ Smith Shaver in the seventh round. You don't see this stuff, guys, and that's why when people freak out about oh the Braves farm system, I'm like, well, guess what? Alex Anthopoulos is going to go into the dang draft and have a guy that's an all star. Doesn't matter if it's the first round or the tenth round, and he's proven to do it time and time again. And I think losing Danny Brown to the to the Astros is a big loss. I think he's a he's a big part of getting a lot of these guys. But it's an organizational system approach where from top to bottom, these guys are just elite, and that's why the Braves are having success. That's why they're set up for sustained success. And there's nothing to say, say it's going to slow down because as long as Alex Anthopoulos and this scouting department is picking up guys like this, I mean, you're looking at a future rotation. You know. Even if Max Freed isn't there, you know, you, you still have Michael Soroka. You hope he can come back. You got Kyle Wright. You got Spencer Strider. You got Bryce Elder. You got AJ smith Shaver, And then you don't even really need anyone for a few more years. So it's it's an unbelievable job that they've done. And I really, really hope he gets the ball on Saturday because I have like my, my parents have those seats up in the Xfinity Club. They're coming oh. to town with my grandma. So. So we're going with, with my grandma. How nice would it be just to luck out and get A.J. smith Shaver's first home start right there in the nice seats, like eating, drinking some beer. So I hope it is on Saturday. But uh, coming up after the break, the Hawks, Quinn Snyder's Hawks, make history with a head coaching hire. <laughs> 